Hello and welcome to Grace Lutheran Church Sermon Podcasts. On this podcast, you will hear the latest sermons taken from our weekly worship service. Our hope is that you will find joy and comfort in knowing the forgiveness of God through Jesus Christ. Well, with today's parable, we reach the end of Matthew chapter 13. In the sower of the seed earlier in the chapter, we saw how the kingdom of God is sown through God's word. In the parable of the wheat and the weeds, we saw how we live in the kingdom of God, producing fruit for a harvest. And we saw how this kingdom starts so small, like a mustard seed, and grows and harbors in its branches all those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Today's parable describes the joy of living in God's kingdom. And there's two concepts that we see repeatedly in Jesus' parables. And they started way back in the Sermon on the Mount. These two concepts are hungering and thirsting and the word righteousness. Way back in Matthew 5, Jesus said, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they will be satisfied. Well, we know what to hunger and thirst is, but how would you define righteousness? Well, rather than define these, they kind of define themselves in examples of how we live. There are some who might say that I have a relationship with food. Some may even say that that relationship looks pretty good. I hunger and thirst in that relationship for just the right food to eat. You'll see me at times grazing through the refrigerator, singing, everybody's looking for something. And in my case, something that will satisfy my immediate hunger, my immediate thirst. I try this, then I try that, but I'm never satisfied. I can never seem to find the food. Truth is, everyone is looking to be satisfied. Everyone is looking for something. They seek a relationship to fill their empty places in life, to feel whole, to feel complete, to not be lacking. You search for the right thing. Some of you may have a relationship with eye or facial cream at night. You search to find that hidden gem of a product that will turn back the hands of time to a more youthful looking you. People in many nations around the world hunger and thirst for a relationship with food and water amid drought and famine. In the Middle East, this scarcity can last off and on for centuries. They, like us, hunger and thirst to be satisfied. Searching for the right things that satisfy us in this world is part of who we are. But hungering and thirsting for righteousness is the longing to be whole and complete without conscience and at peace with God. Spiritual satisfaction. Spiritual wholeness. Searching to find the right sandwich and the best eye cream satisfies. It is the best that we can do to feel full or look younger. We're satisfied physically, but momentarily. But searching after righteousness is spiritual and eternal. It is the longing to be found pure, without blemish, filled, whole, and complete in relationship to God. Some see righteousness, though, as sometimes it's something that they can attain or they can obtain by pleasing God or proving to be perfect in God's eyes. People think they can find it, that they can lay claim to it as their own, like you would a perfect loaf of bread or that fabulous eye cream. This converts righteousness into an object, kind of commodifies it, something to possess. 
It's easy to see why people in our society would think this way because we think of things to fulfill our needs. We naturally hunger and thirst after that thing that will fill whatever need you have. We find pleasure and fulfillment even worth in things that we possess. They are our treasures. It's mine. I own it. We feed off our market-driven economy, purchasing products that proffer pleasure, satisfaction guaranteed to make you feel whole, or your money back. Just try it. You'll like it. And try it we do. Today, malls are places of worship where you can seek meager happiness, buying and dreaming when depressed or lonely. Using products to satisfy needs might be true in this life. The problem is that most people end up thinking of Jesus and righteousness as a product that they need. Those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, you want that righteousness. You want to be declared unblemished and forgiven, and you want Jesus. Jesus is marketed as the answer. To possess Jesus is to possess the answer to the life after death question. Need him, want him, got him. The magic get out of hell free card product to salvation is yours. Problem solved. Right answers given. Many think once you have Jesus, you can move on with the rest of your life. In scripture, however... Righteousness is found only in a relationship, not a product. It is not what you have, but through whom you live and move and have your being. Only in, with, and through a relationship with Jesus does God declare you pure and righteous, whole, complete, lacking in nothing. Only in a relationship with him you are whole. While in this world, your tendency is to endlessly pursue things that you guess might satisfy your needs, you will not be satisfied until you pursue that relationship with Jesus. You can't possess him and then go back to live the rest of your life without him. He makes a claim on you. Let those who have ears listen up. As Jesus says, look at it this way. Every relationship that you enter makes claims on you and your life. If you have a relationship with food, you eat. If you have a relationship with looking younger, you apply that facial cream. If you have a relationship with your spouse, you are faithful in your pursuit to show him or her how much you love them. If you have a relationship with wealth, you work to no end. Likewise in God's kingdom. If Jesus is your righteousness, you seek to remain in that relationship through prayer, through the study of his word. He is your priority in all aspects of your life. And your desire above all else is to live with him in his kingdom. Righteous pure, free from sin. To be found righteous or whole and forgiven comes to you as a gift, as part of your relationship with him. He is righteous, so you are righteous. God declares you righteous. Righteousness is a declaration through his son's death and resurrection because of your relationship with him. Paul says he covers you with his righteousness. You are clothed with his righteousness. I do nothing. Do you hunger and thirst? Pursue after him and you will be righteous. This is the key to understanding our parable. (laughs) For millennia, pillaging armies crisscrossed the Middle East and Jewish families buried possessions in their field only to dig it up later after danger had passed. Everyone listening to Jesus hid valuables in their field somewhere. They also knew that 
there was probably treasures that they didn't hide that were in those fields as well. Well, if you were poor and hungering and thirsting for wealth, you'd probably go around digging in the soil. So let those who have ears, those who are hungering and thirsting, listen up. In this parable, the field is God's word. It's not the wheat field as in the other parables. The Old Testament scripture, Jesus' word, the field is God's word. God's salvation, Jesus, is the mystery and hidden treasure. Undoubtedly, those listening to Jesus probably had walked through fields many times unknowingly passing over those treasures. Or they may even have plowed a few of those fields and the treasure was there, but maybe they were so content and maybe they had no reason to pick up a few coins. Maybe they had food in the refrigerator. Maybe they had night cream on their end table. For all who have needs and seek, as well as for all those who do not or think they do not, Christ is still in all of the pages of the Old Testament and the New Testament. He's always in the field. He's there right now to satisfy hunger and thirst. Finally, in the parable, there is a farmer whose plow goes into a hole and he uncovers a treasure. Who listening to Jesus will do what the farmer did and pursue that treasure and dig it up? Or after finding it, will they refuse to follow and walk away back to their lives? Would you give up all your wealth because you found that treasure? Or will you walk away because you have enough and other things to worry about? How many people do you know who have heard God's word, know Bible stories, but really have no need for it in their life? They're okay where they are. That is, how many people have walked over scripture not knowing or caring what lies underfoot within those pages? Yes, I've read the Gospels and I don't see anything special about them. I know all the stories of Jesus. Seems he was a good man. Yes, I go to church every Sunday, love the people, love the music. I'm entertained for a day. What do you suppose your friends would do if they were to find that one night cream that reversed the hands of times like Benjamin Buttons? They'd dig up the treasure. They'd buy it. They'd sell everything they had to buy it and keep buying it. Or what if they were to find that one diet food that would eliminate hunger, reduce their weight, and never have it back again? They'd most probably build a house and fill it with jars and jars of this magic and use it daily, wouldn't you? If you are looking for it, hungering after it, thirsting after it, wouldn't you buy it and use it every day? You'd develop a relationship with it. Can't live without it. Your joy would be complete. You know there's nothing like that on earth. No treasure can reverse the hands of time. Just like there is nothing that you can do to reverse actions that you have done in the past and now regret. There's no amount of money that can buy you happiness, restitution, or pay your life's debt. There is no one possession that can satisfy your need, so you'd have to look no more. No matter how you hunger and thirst for it, you can't and won't find it. Nothing can make you happy forever. Now, if you know, and I'm sure you do, that nothing you've tried completely satisfies your hunger in this life, and if you know that you are destined to endlessly seek and search Satisfaction, wouldn't you want to be saved from that constant want, constant guessing, constant trying this and that, not only in the physical marketplace in the stores, but in your spiritual life as well? Wishing and scheming and promising God and doing this and that, trying different things to be and find that righteousness, how much would you pay for a product like that? You can't. No amount of money in your life can buy it. 
There is no one who is righteous, as Paul says in Romans 3. No, not one. Besides, God doesn't want your righteousness, your feigned, flawless life, your pompous parading of works. He offers you what you can't buy and the world can't offer. God purchases you through the blood of his son and declares you righteous with a robe of many colors. When you hear in God's word that there is forgiveness and mercy for what you've done, you respond to the invitation and pursue a relationship with God through Christ. You want to hear more. You want to hear it daily, hourly, never depart from it. Amid memories that malign your life, your hunger, and thirst for a relationship in which you are declared righteous, forgiven, whole, and loved by God. Only Christ offers this relationship with God the Father. Christ is the hidden treasure in the field that offers you wholeness, completeness. He offered the woman at the well water that would never make her thirst again. Who longs in desperation for such a treasure to give up on everything to have him in your life? He's the unparalleled joy that the, the man finds in this field, treasure as well as the pearl. No need to look any further. He's satisfied. He pursues it by selling everything that he has. He's not buying it. He already has the treasure, but he needs nothing else. So he sells everything that he has. He sells everything because of the joy that this one thing caused him that he considered everything else in his life worthless compared to that. Do you remember the book, Where's Waldo? These were books with pages of complex cartoon-like crowds of people with variety of clothing, colors and sizes. People were really little filling a book of pretty large size. Somewhere on that page was Waldo dressed in a red and white striped shirt. You had to find him. And when you found him, you were happy. Your search ended. You won the game. You'd close the book, and you'd put it back on the shelf. Do you find Jesus in the pages of Scripture? Do you recognize the crimson stripes on his bloody body? By his stripes, you are healed. Do you recognize him? He's found on every page. And when you do find him, you've won the game. But do you put him back on the shelf? Take him out when you just need him? Once you have him, don't close the book to get on with your life. You can't get on with your life without him. Your daily life, all you need is to pursue that relationship to be complete, clothed in righteousness through whom God declares you forgiven of sins, justified through his son. We have a hymn. We sing it many times. Jesus, priceless treasure, source of purest pleasure, truest friend to me. Ah, how long I've panted and my heart has fainted, thirsting, Lord, for thee. Thine I am, O spotless lamb. I will suffer not to hide thee. Not I ask beside thee. Amen. To know more about Jesus and our ministry at Grace Lutheran Church, please find us at www.gracealoneonline.org. You'll find additional sermon podcasts and your favorite podcast channel every week at www.gracealoneonline.org forward slash sermons.